Good afternoon. It is November 5th, uh, election day. Um, so fingers crossed uh, that things go well and safe and everything. Um, okay, we are working on lessons nine and 10. We are finishing up fraction multiplication and headed right into fraction division, which um, I think is actually really fun. So um, let's get started with some silly jokes. Okay. This one is, uh, I think, really silly because it says... Um, there's an edge to a box or to a, you know, prism vertex, the face, the vertex is where the points meet. The face is the two dimensional, you know, rectangle. The edge is just the line that connects the two vertexes or, you know, I think that's how you say it. Um, but obviously kids only want to know like what's inside of it. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's one of them. And my second joke is, this is really funny. Okay, uh, so these are office workers, four, one, six, and um, the title of this is like in an office, it says the great divide. So it kind of might mean, you know, something's happening or splitting up. And um, and then the number six says it's the guy from division, like one of the parts of the company looks like we're downsizing because when you divide things, you um, do get things smaller, except today and other times when we are dividing by a fraction. So um, I thought that that was applicable. So like, looks like we're downsizing, <laughs> like, you know. Um, okay, so let's head on over to our homework for today. Okay. All right, we have a new homework protocol. So I'm gonna model like exactly what to do um, with all of them, uh, with each of it this entire week. So um, your paper should look like my paper, same like in school where my pen is your pen. Um, okay, so the directions are to use these lesson notes to guide my thinking, right? And be an example for how to solve problems. I'm gonna show my thinking and work on all of the problems and you'll see that there's, I made them like like nice and big, but I, I've used all three sides this time. Um, then you're gonna watch the video, which is what we're doing now. And we're gonna take the video notes um, with the special flare pens, which hopefully um, you have uh, with you and that you didn't misplace. And if you wanna use another pen, that's totally fine too. It doesn't have to be a special flare pen, but um, I know I use flare pens, so I thought I would share. Okay, then you're gonna compare your responses check your thinking, evaluate, and then you're gonna write any thoughts, questions, or conclusions for these lessons. And um, I will give you some beat points for those. And then you'll turn in both pages, just like regular. All right, so in lesson nine, we were applying some fraction multiplication and we were working on like parts of flags. And that just helps us with the word of um, when we are taking like a fraction of something. So in this case, we were just finding the area, but then if we wanted to find the blue, which is a third of the area, we would know what to do with the multiplication. All right, so this is then four times two and a half. Say that with a little bit of stink. And I have a two times four, which is right here, and then a half times four, which is right there. And then I combine, this is the and, okay? And then, Monday or two, no, today was our first foray into division with fractions. Oh my goodness gracious. So let's see what that looks like here. Lesson 10 notes. Okay, hold on. There we go. I need that. Okay. All right. So today we definitely looked at the size of quotients, which is the answer and make connections about division. The dividend is what we start with. We've also called that, uh, what we share or what is split. Okay. Uh, starting amount, we usually say, okay. And then the divisor splits 
shares, the number of splits, the number of shares. Um, so that's you know always the second number. This is always the first number. This is always the second number. And the quotient is always the answer. Order absolutely matters for division and subtraction for that um, for that as well. Uh, multiplication and addition, it doesn't. But division, subtraction, it does. So let's see what happens. We have 12 divided by 3. We know that that's 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Look what's happening to the dividend. My dividend, the amount I'm starting with, it's getting smaller and smaller. But my divisor, what I'm splitting it by, is staying exactly the same. So if I'm splitting it into the same number of piles, sharing it with the same number of people, but the amount that I'm starting with is getting smaller and smaller, my quotient's going to get smaller and smaller. We notice that the quotient gets smaller when the dividend gets smaller. Less things to share, okay? I'm gonna write any questions I have here. All right. Okay. You'll notice on the next page that I've already done pencil work because I'm modeling what it should look like for all of you. You should have pencil work done. And then you're watching the video with the video notes and you're making the notes with a pen or just something other than a pencil. Okay. All right. So I'm going to do my pencil notes on one side and then I'm going to compare to the video notes. The area of this replica of the flag of Austria is, all right, so I already know the area, centimeters squared. And then it says each of the three stripe sections are all equal. So if I want to know the white part of the flag, I know that I'm taking one third of the total area, and then I can replace that with my 20 and one third and then I have one third of, which then turns into one third times 20 and one third. And that's one way to do it. I also have 20 and this is an and. So I can say uh, one third times 20 and one third, one third, oh, sorry. One third times 20 and one third times one third, notice I'm not doing 20 times. Well, actually I'm doing 20 times one third, but that's only because this is one third. Okay. And then if I multiplied that out, I would get 20 over three and one ninth. Um, and then let's just say I go back up to that top problem and I turn this into an improper fraction or greater than one. I'm going to get Three, I have 20 sets of three, my mistake, 20 sets of three, 20 sets of three plus one piece out of size of thirds, okay? So that'd be 61 over three. Okay, so um, I'm not gonna convert that into a mixed number. I noticed that I don't have a mixed number as an answer, so I'm not gonna take time doing that. Okay, so I see one third, and 20 times 20 and one third right here, circling that. And then I see mm, there's no one half, one third and one third is only part of it. But then I see 61 thirds. That's definitely what that is. Oops, times the one third. Yikes, don't forget that everybody. Um, you have to have the length times the width because of the, the white piece, um, the white strip. So I have 61 thirds times one third, this one works. And then if I multiply this out, I do have 61 over nine. Okay, okay. So it looks like it was the same as my pencil work, but if not, then I would go back and, and, and see what I made mistake on. Okay, uh, next, this flag of Malta is six inches long by four and two thirds inches wide. The white and red sections are equal in size. So that means that they are a half each. And again, you'll notice I already finished it in pencil. So I'm just gonna work on it in uh, my video notes. All right, what's the area of the entire flag? Nice, show your thinking, which means I can't just pick something and write something. I'm gonna write area equals length times width. My length is four and two thirds, and my width is six. So I'm gonna do six times four and 
six times two thirds. I'm gonna multiply that out and I get 24 and 12 thirds. I know 12 thirds is 12 divided by three, which is four plus 24, which is 28. And it's inches square inches. It's exactly what I got on my pencil. So I'm feeling pretty good right now. And then it says, what's the area of the red section? Well, I know that the red is one half of the area. So let me replace area with 28. And I'm gonna take one half of 28, which is one half times 28, which is 28 over two, which is 14 square inches because I'm doing 28 divided by two or how many twos in 28. All right. Oh, look, same thing. Okay. Next, um, I have uh, some fun work going on here and uh, it says divide mentally. So I'm, I'm taking a look at this. I'm doing this pretty fast. I have 150 divided by 15. How many 15s in 150? 10. How many 10s in 150? 15. How many 5s in 150? 30. How many 3s in 150? 50. How many 9s in 90? 10. How many 3s in 90? 30. How many 18s in 180? 10. How many 10s in 180? 18. How many nines in 180? 20. Look. Um, how many sixes in 180? 30. How many threes in 180? 60. How many twos in 180? 90. All right. And for, I was going to have this be graded, but, you know, just figured we would do it together. Um, and then for number 13, I am writing for each pair of expressions, circle the greater quotient. So what I notice is that the dividend remains the same, but my divisor gets smaller. So I'm thinking through this. The amount I'm sharing is 240, but I have six groups or three groups. I'm gonna circle the three groups because that's gonna mean more in each group, right? And to be honest, 240 divided by six would be 40, and this would be 80. So that's why. Okay, next one. Ooh, look at this. I have 240 divided by two. I'm just going to solve this, and I'm going to get 120, and then 40 over here for 120 divided by three, or how many three groups of three are in 120? And I know that that's larger. Mostly times when I'm splitting something in half, um, it's going to be a pretty big number. All right. Last one, I have the same dividend, but look, different divisor. So I'm taking the same amount in a pile, but I'm dividing it by three and I'm dividing it by six. If I make the same amount split into three piles, I'm most certainly going to have more than if I split it into six piles because three is smaller and the starting number was the same. All right, so I hope that this is kind of coming together in your brain. We've got just a little bit more to go. All right, we're going to find the value of each expression, actually kind of like division. And then we're going to answer some questions. 48 divided by 4. How many 4s in 48? 12. How many 4s in 36? 9. How many 4s in 24? 6. How many 4s in 12? 3. How many 4s in 8? Ooh. How many fours in four? One. How many fours in one? One fourth. I'm going to just take a moment to show you if this is one. Okay. And our uh, pictures are going to actually um, represent lots of different things today, whether they're fractional parts or whole numbers and like moving forward. So it always needs to be named. So this represents one and I'm splitting it into four pieces. And so therefore this is one fourth. All right, so it's one divided up by four. It's getting good. All right, so look at the quotients from 14A. That's all of the, the ones that write the answers. Explain why the quotient got smaller. Well, I wrote earlier, the quotient got smaller because the dividend, the first number, decreased in size, but the divisor remained the same. 
That's what I thought originally. And I'm going to write that again now, similarly, but also to show you, you could explain it in lots of different ways. It does not have to be my uh, response, but you could say the quotient gets smaller when the amount divided gets smaller, but we are splitting the amount in the same way, right? This is the splitting that's being split in the same way, but what's happening to the dividend also happens to the quotient. All right, that's good stuff. If the pattern continued and the next expression was one fourth divided by four, what do you know about the size of the quotient? Well, this is staying the same, this is decreasing. So I know somehow my quotient has to decrease and my quotient was one fourth. So what could be smaller than one fourth? Let's see, if I have one fourth divided by four, it means I'm taking one fourth of one fourth. That's definitely gonna be really small. Because if I'm taking one fourth of one fourth, that's splitting one fourth into four pieces. There's four sections in a whole, which means that each of those are split into four pieces to know the actual size of the one fourth of one fourth. So I know it's going to be smaller than one fourth because a fraction of a fraction is an even smaller fraction. <laughs> okay, and then my last question, fraction of fraction smaller piece all right and then my last question asks me to actually find that uh amount okay so i have a diagram to split fourths into four so i have one fourth divided by four so first i'm going to say that this entire thing is one and then i'm going to split it into fourths so this is one and i want to name um, the size of my bars, like my, you know, bar models because, um, or the bar diagram, because otherwise it's going to be too confusing. So if I know this is a whole, then I know that that fourth is one fourth and I'm going to split it into fourths. And if you notice this right here, colored in orange part is super, super tiny. And it's one fourth of the one fourth I have. And if I were to make a size of that in every single part or every single fourth, I'm going to have one sixteenth of them because one fourth divided by four, I'm going to be taking one fourth of one fourth. And I want you to do that. Always draw the arrow and write down what's happening in the picture. So we're going to do one fourth first of one fourth, and I'm going to get one sixteenth. Okay. So my mom, my mom's phone is ringing. That's okay. <laughs> um, but anyways, I'm going to get one sixteenth of, of the whole or the one that we started with. Okay. So that was really good. We're going to do this arrow and the of every single time we are multiple, I'm sorry, every single time we are dividing because we do end up multiplying. Okay. Uh, that was really fun. I shall see everybody soon and have a good night. And like I said, I hope everything uh, is like safe and goes smoothly this evening. All right. Night, night.